Warning. The following episode contains scenes of real talk that may offend you, convict you, and maybe even convert you. Viewer discretion is advised. Tell me how you see Mormonism, his religion, and how you define it within the Christian community. Well, you know, what I see about Governor Romney is that he says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he's raised from the dead, and, you know, he's my Savior. Well, I see him as being a believer in Christ like me. And that's I, enough for you? Yeah, that's enough for me. I mean, there's differences in all religion. I, I realize Mormonism is different from Christianity, but you know what? He's a man of faith and values, and to me, that's, that's strong. Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's Word. And today I'm joined by my son Kazen on this special episode as we discuss the LDS Church, also known as the Mormons. And we're going to answer the question that so many people have. Are Mormons Christian and are they saved? Well, the LDS faith is growing rapidly. But if you look at the business side of it, they'd be ranked number seventh in the world for total income if they were a for-profit company. So they have a lot of money and influence. And right as of right now, they have around 20 million people just in the US alone. And the, the numbers could go extreme if you look at the whole world. So it's, they're really growing. Yeah, but again, more important than the business side of things is what do they believe? What are they teaching? What kind of faith and doctrine do they stand on? And is it leading them to heaven or to hell? We're gonna examine that, so please stay with us. So let's start from the beginning. Joseph Smith supposedly had a little encounter when he was younger, back in the 1800s, and I think it was based on a lie. Check this out. In September 1823, as he again opened his heart to God, Joseph was visited by a heavenly messenger. Joseph, I am your fellow servant. Moses truly said. He said his name was Moroni and that God had a work for me to do. So supposedly the angel Moroni showed up to Joseph Smith and told him to go uh, look beyond this tree and dig down and you're gonna find some golden tablets? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that did not happen, absolutely not. But because of this lie, because of this so-called experience, Joseph has been claiming that the LDS church is the only true church. I mean, that sounds demonic. That's not like something Satan would say. By the way, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, says that Satan appears as an angel of light. Angel mm. of light, Moroni, hmm, sounds a little demonic to me. Check this out. If it had not been for Joseph Smith and the restoration, there would be no salvation. There is no salvation outside the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So salvation is only through the LDS Church, according to Joseph Smith. Let's talk about that. Wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah, said no verse ever. If you look at Acts uh, 4 verse 12, it shows that salvation goes to the Christ, not our works on earth or what we do and uh, temple work that they believe in. That just goes against scripture. It doesn't make any sense. It's not, yeah, it's absolutely not biblical. So now what Case and I are gonna do is we're gonna break down the four most prominent beliefs of the LDS church. We're gonna look at them briefly and we're gonna see, are they biblical? and leading people to heaven, or are they unbiblical and deceiving people and leading them to hell? Why don't you start with number one? So number one, we we're gonna talk about Joseph Smith and his King Follett sermon. It's a very famous speech that was recorded in history. And he talks about the first uh, principle that um, overlays above the gospel or our salvation. He talks about how God was a man and he worked himself up to be who he is today. What do you mean by that? and he was always changing and never always God? Doesn't make any sense. Wow, again, <laughs> but that's what makes Mormonism so um, beautiful and so attractive to the world, is guess what, you're just a man, I'm just a man, you're just a man. So if you just live right, if you just kind of obey the right things and do the right things, you could be a God, I could be a God. I mean, again, according to the Mormon faith, you could, I mean, there's billions of gods out there, not just one. What's wrong with you people? Now let's see what the Bible says about this. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Again, look at that. In the beginning, God created. He was the one existing. He's the Alpha and Omega. There was no, there was nothing before him. Okay, so there was no start to him. But again, they don't even know that because they think every man became and worked himself up to a God. So who was the first one? They have no answer for that. Yeah. Let's also look at Isaiah 43 verse 10, where it says, before me, there was no God formed 
and there's, there will be none after me. And if you go down to Isaiah 44, verse 6, it says, I am the first, I am the last, and there is no God besides me. So God was not just a man who worked himself up. He was always God. And he was not just created to be on this earth. He is the creator. Yeah. And that's, and that's a sad belief that they have, that God was created. Because again, that's a false God. So point number one, they have a false God, not a God of the Bible, like we've already read, but one they've made up in their own mind. Why don't you take us to point two? So point two, they share that Jesus also was just a man who worked himself up to be where he is today, but he was also never part of the Trinity. And Jesus was the spirit brother of Lucifer, who is Satan, and he was married to both Marys and Martha, and God had sex to have Jesus? What? Wait, what? What? What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> I Man, I, that almost caught me off guard. So God had sex with Mary to produce Jesus. Again, there's that created thing that they seem to be caught on. Again, that is absolutely unbiblical. Let's look what the Bible says. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's talking about Christ. And then in verse 3 of John 1, All things came into being through him, and apart from him, being Jesus, nothing came into being that has come into being. Again, Jesus was not created. And it's sad that many even evangelicals believe that he was created, but it's simply not true. God has, Jesus has always been God, will always be God. Well, if you want to skip down to verse 14 of John 1, you can see that it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and he saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. And again, that's talking about Christ. Mm. But see, the sad thing is, is again, you'll see this all throughout this episode, is the Mormons twist God's word. They've already created other things that are contrary to God's word, which we'll talk about later. But again, they twist Luke chapter 1, verse 35, which says the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That's talking, the angel is talking to Mary. And by the way, that's not Moroni that's talking to Mary and stuff. But again, nowhere in the Bible does it teach that God had sex with anybody. Bruh. Yeah. I mean, let alone Mary. They believe that, again, Jesus was a created being. So point number two, they have a false Jesus. So point number three, we can work our way to different levels of heaven. What? Wrong. <laughs> That's not even close. But you have to check this out. Watch this. Again, so one of their articles of faith, they say all men are saved through Christ, but also by obedience and laws to the ordinance of the gospel. So I understood the gospel to mean the laws and ordinances of the LDS church. So, um, you know, not only can we not keep the law that's, that's written in our heart and that's written in the Bible, but you have additional ordinances in the LDS church. And so you can never keep up with it. There's never assurance. You never really land. So you see there, they have a different gospel that's not anywhere found in scripture. It's kind of funny. If you look at their own book, the Book of Mormon, we can go to 2 Nephi, 25 verse 23 and it states for we labor diligently to write to persuade our children and also our brethren to believe in christ and to be reconciled to god for we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do did you just say that i mean it says it right there in their own stuff after all we can do that's funny. that sounds like our salvation or their salvation is based on their efforts <laughs> no that is unbiblical. Again, scripture is very clear that that's not true. And this is a damning belief. This belief seriously is sending them to hell. Because again, the salvation rests in their hands, not God. And biblically, salvation isn't based on what we do. It's based on what Jesus did. Remember, they have, according to them, there's no need for Christ. There's no need for the cross because it's all based on what we, oh, you know, you did such a good job. No, that is, yeah, it's literally a gold star for you and me. It's wrong. Galatians chapter one, verses six through nine says that if you preach a different gospel, you are damned or anathema or cursed. And that's what's going on in the LDS church. Well, in a great gospel verse, um, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it also states, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. Do you see that? Not a result of works. It's grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Also, Romans chapter 3, verse 28 says, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Again, you're seeing a little pattern here that works have nothing to do with salvation. 
Well, in Romans 4, verse 5, also states, But to the one who does not work, but believes in him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. So again, and we could give you tons more verses, especially Ezekiel 36, verses 25 and 26. Salvation is a work of God, not a work of us. Again, why is that? Because if we could have any part in our salvation and we could earn our salvation and work for it, we would get the credit. I, I did a good job. Way to go, Jordan. You did amazing. You know, I'm such a good boy. No, that's not biblical. And the Bible says that God will share his glory with no one. You got to watch this. Check this out. How can you, how can you say that I am saved just by grace alone? It is through your service, through your sacrifice, and through um, doing everything you can to make your heavenly Father proud that He's going to say, "Okay, my good and faithful servant." Heavenly Father is not just going to give us gifts if we're not going to do anything to show Him that 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 we're doing everything we can to make Him proud. You know, you don't you don't get something for nothing, ever. Again, you see that. Again, you have to work to be saved. This is, again, a damning belief because it's leading people to think that they are responsible for their salvation. Number four, we're going to look at the Book of Mormon and how this is the newest revelation from God and how Jesus came to the ancient Americans and provided this word to the prophet Mormon, and it was re uh, later recovered by Joseph Smith through golden tablets that he magically deciphered, which no one knew the language, by the yeah, way. It's kind of just like, oh, I know what it says, but you don't? That, that yeah. does not make any sense. And didn't you see something like that when you were in Salt Lake? Yes, so on our messenger's trip, we got to see the museum um, in Salt Lake City Square, and they have replicas of the golden tablets to show what it may have looked like because no one really has ever seen them other than Joseph Smith and his like two friends. And uh, they, the story goes that he shared this ancient Egyptian language with um, scholars and professors at colleges near him. No one can decipher it except for him. That, wow. that does not make any sense. We should just worship Joseph Smith. I mean, you know, he, he must be God himself. I mean, according to him, he probably is, but you know. But I want you to watch this next video as it talks about the three other sources of revelation. Check this out. New Testament first composed in a language other than English. Composed maybe, we don't know, but some books may be in Aramaic. Certainly all of the books in Greek. Old Testament first composed in Hebrew. The Doctrine and Covenants is unique in that it is our only volume of the standard works that was revealed in the first instance in the English language. It was revealed in the language of Joseph Smith, which was his mother tongue, was the English language. And so there's no um, opportunity, if you will, for mistranslation. This came straight from the Lord to the Lord's prophet. And I think that that makes it an, an incredible uh, book, an exciting book of scripture to look at. So you see, God's word is not enough. That's the thing you have to really see, and this is at the heart of the issue. Again, they are looking for other sources of revelation, and you will see this in many other cults and false religions, that God's word is not sufficient, so we have to go to get a prophetic word, or we have to have a vision, or a dream, or some kind of hunch or nudge. Again, this is absolutely false. Well, and if you look at LDS members, sometimes they'll be walking around with a quad. It's a very thick book. And they have four books that they swear by and they, they always use um, verses from that. And even it includes the Bible, which is kind of weird. Hmm. Um, the first book is the Book of Mormon, like we talked about. The second one is the Bible, but it's the, the, it's the King James Version only. They are not allowed to use any other version. Hmm. The third one is Doctrine and Covenants or the DNC, which is most famous known by. And the last one is the Pearl of Great Price. And like we've talked about, for them, they're going outside of God's word. Okay. For Joseph Smith, it wasn't enough. Supposedly some angel is going to tell him that there's more. I, again, doesn't that sound demonic? That does not sound like anything, you know, God's not going to say, hey, here's my Bible or here's my word. It's totally sufficient, but go, go, go look other places under a tree. You're going to find some more. No, it's not at all. And again, second... Timothy chapter three, verses 16 and 17 is very, very clear that God's word is sufficient, it's complete, and it's fully capable to provide everything we need for a godly life. Let's also look at Jude three. 
It says, Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about your common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all time handed down to the saints. So if you recap, Mormons really have an unholy trinity. It's false God, false Jesus, and false gospel. And to them, that sounds amazing. But in reality, it's leading millions astray. We saw 20 million people in the in the U.S. alone. All those people are thinking those are what's saving them, and it's really not. Yeah, and it's really it, 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 the Kazan had just a great point there. At the bottom basement, not only do they have just all this false stuff, but it's very man centered, and that's always what Satan does. It's always about us. Again, we're so good, we could be gods. We could have our own planet. We can go to the highest level of heaven. What? Again, nowhere found in scripture, not biblical. The gospel is about Jesus. The gospel is about what he did for us in his grace and mercy that we didn't deserve. And by the way, we can't earn it or work for it. So again, when you look at the Mormon faith in the LDS church, they are not Christian. They are not saved. They're not going to heaven. Why? Because they are their own savior, not Jesus Christ.